everyone how are you today um and we're just letting people in right now so um it will be like a couple more minutes until we start the workshop uh but for now i did share a link in the chat um that link is just to a google drive with all the kind of the, the some of the images that I, i'll be using today and also a pdf of uh just all the most common shortcuts used in Blender. So if you're trying to learn Blender on your own, it's a good resource to have either print it out or have it on a screen while you're using Blender. Um, if you forget a shortcut, um, you can look at that sheet. And um, I do recommend that you um, like learn some of the shortcuts. It just makes it a lot easier for you to, uh, to get stuff done while you're working. Uh, so yeah, let me introduce myself, I guess, while we start letting uh, people in. Uh, my name is Alvaro Alvarez. I'm the Innovative Media Librarian at the Orbach Science Library. So um, um, part of my job right now is just managing the Creator Lab. Uh, the other part is working with faculty and students with research help uh, with uh, anything related to the makerspace, like 3D scanning, printing, modeling, VR. We offer a lot of services in there. So come check us out. We're open 12 to 4, Monday through Friday. Um, so um, you do get uh, two free prints for the 3D printing. Uh, you get 30 grams for each or uh, combined to 60 grams for a print. Uh, and we do have a form online for that service that you have to fill out and then uh, give us like the STL file. Uh, you can always email me as well. Uh, at the end of the workshop, I'll share my um, contact information. You can always email me with questions. Uh, this session is getting recorded too. Um, uh, and um, it'll be available to you on the uh, library uh, YouTube. Um, so um, we could share that out as well. If you wanna reach out to me, I can send the link out, but you can just go to our library page and look that up. I'll try to look for the link as well at the end of the workshop and share that with you. That way you just have a direct link to that. And I do have all previous workshops there too. Um, it'll be this one and other ones I've done in the past. Uh, uh, I see a question. Yeah, um, if you do wish to um, follow along, uh, yeah, I did share a link right now with uh, the images I'll be using. Um, yeah, and if you can, you can download Blender. Um, it's um, what version am I using? I think I'm using 3.2.2. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, you can download. It's uh, the latest version. Should be fine. They're not too different. Uh, and you can try to follow along with me. I will try to answer questions as well uh, at the end. Um, and um, let me introduce my student worker too. Uh, his name's Fahed, if you wanna. Oh, uh, yeah, he's hi, in the back. Um, uh, my name's Fahed al Khatib. I'm a computer engineering student. You might see me in the background as the uh, the, <laughs> the dynamic background glitches, but uh, I, uh, I work at the Creator Lab here in Orbach Library under Alvaro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, thanks for that. So for ahead, I'll be trying to, you know, try to answer questions and uh, while uh, I'm doing the session. And if you can't, I'll try to answer them at the end. Uh, so I shared my screen. Um, some of you are asking about the Blender. So if you just go to blender.org, uh, hopefully you could see this. You can download uh, the latest Blender here. Um, you just click on download Blender and then um, that'll uh, take you to the downloads. So you could go up here and download either one. Uh, so you wanna do this one and then uh, I already have it installed so I don't need to download. So you see it started downloading for me. Uh, it's a newer version right now on the website. I'm a little behind. I haven't updated it just because uh, I like to stay a couple of versions behind because um, uh, the newer versions always have some kinks that they need to work out. But uh, yeah, um, if you don't have Blender installed, go ahead and do that. Uh, it's pretty quick to install. Uh, for what we're doing today, you should be okay um, using uh, any computer. But when you do get into more of the high-end stuff with uh, 3D modeling um, and uh, animation and stuff, uh, you will require something with a better graphics card, uh, just because it'll slow down your computer uh, like like a lot. Um, uh, I've experienced that with my old laptop as well. Like sometimes it would just crash, but. Uh, uh, also, we do have media computers in the Creator Lab with Blender. So if you ever wanted to come and use our computers, uh, you're welcome to come and use those as well. So, um, yeah, and here is, um, I wanted to play this for you. So this, we're gonna be creating uh, Kirby today. So, so yeah, you see, I'll play it again if you want. Uh, 
So it's pretty much, it's an animation using what we're gonna be doing today. Um, yeah, so this is a two part uh, workshop. So next week I'm going to go over all the uh, animation and the keyframing and all of that uh, and setting up your lighting and the scene. Uh, so by the end of next week, next Wednesday for part two, you'll have something like this uh, where you can uh, play the animation. Now uh, today we're just gonna focus on getting the character ready. So I'm gonna show you how to uh, 3D model Kirby, add the bone structure to them. So that way uh, we can do all the poses with them uh, next week. Uh, okay, so let me move this out of the way. So I have my blender up already. Um, just really quick so that, um, uh, for those of you that are not familiar with Blender, uh, over here is like all the uh, all the tools that you get with Blender. So you can see you can have like the move, the rotate, scaling, transforming. Uh, you can click on your object and then uh, you can move around. I have a three button mouse. So I'm clicking on the middle mouse right now to kind of pan around. Uh, I use the wheel to scroll. Um, if you don't have that, um, you could come up here on this uh, circle on the top and then you can kind of click around, move around. Uh, you have to click and kind of hold and drag. So it'd be like a left click. Uh, but I do recommend getting the three button mouse though. Um, but again, a lot of the stuff you can do over here, like you could zoom, uh, move the view. Um, but um, since I have my mouse, I can do all of that, all of that here. So if I, Hold shift and do the middle click, I can pan around. But if I wanted to do it, I can click on this and the little hand and I can do the same with the controls on the top right. So don't worry if you don't have a three button mouse for today. Um, so yeah, that's just some of the navigation stuff on, on here. Right now I am in um, object mode. So you see, I have some of the tools over here like to move my object or rotate it. Uh, you can also do the shortcuts, like I mentioned. Um, that's like something very useful. So if I click on my object, you can tell your click if it's highlighted yellow. If I hit R on my keyboard, I can rotate it. If I hit S, I can scale it. Um, if I hit S and then I do like uh, type three, it'll expand it to that. Um, uh, so yeah, that's why I recommend using the keyboard shortcuts. Um, it's a lot quicker than having to go and click over here, but I mean, you can do whatever you're comfortable with. Um, and then uh, if you want to edit the object, you have to actually go into another mode. So you can hit tab on your keyboard to get to it, edit mode, or you can just go up on the left and click on, um, on this menu, and then you just go to edit mode itself. Uh, you saw there's a lot of other options too, like sculpting and all that, but we're not we're not going to uh, work on that uh, today. I might do a workshop in the future for sculpting, so keep an eye out for that. I'm still playing around with that and getting used to that. Um, but um, yeah, anyway, uh, you could see that in edit mode now. I have these little dots. So so these are the vertices. So up here, uh, you could see that. Um, there's three different modes. So right now I'm in vertex, uh, vertex select, which uh, allows me to click on these dots and I can hit like G on my keyboard. I can grab and move those dots around to manipulate my object or I can uh, I can do other stuff. I can delete them. Um, if I want to work with the edges instead, um, you could click on the middle one. Uh, so for the edge, that's just the line between the two uh, vertices. So anything between two um, vertices is an edge. So uh, again, you'd be able to click on that edge. You could kind of see and then hit G and move that whole edge around. So essentially you're moving both vertices and everything in between that uh, if you select that. Uh, over here, faces. So the faces is just the... Uh, the area in between like the, ver the vertices and all the, all the edges. So if I grab a face, again, I can, I can grab it, move the whole thing up and down. I can extrude. Um, yeah, so, so it just depends what you're doing. Um, you, the keyboard shortcuts for these are on the top one, two, and three, I believe. So you can quickly move between them. Uh, 
So it just depends what you're doing with your model. Like if you just need to work with one of these vertices then you would just go up here, do that, and then just grab the vertice that you want, grab it and move it. Or if you need to move the whole thing, then you would go up here, hit the face option, and then you would grab it and, and manipulate it to your desire. Uh, and uh, let's see. Oh, I see a question. Uh, so you're asking when the recording will be posted. Usually it'll be like about a week, a week or two, uh, but keep an eye out for it. Um, and it'll, I'll, I'll share the link out to the uh, YouTube channel at the end uh, so that you guys can have it ready. Uh, yeah, but anyway, yeah, I'm just gonna delete. Uh, Someone's asking about uh, the key binds for uh, rotation and movement and stuff. I don't know if you answered that already. Oh, the key lines. Uh, let me see. Oh, I'm in edit mode. Uh, so for rot for rotating. So like, if I wanted to rotate my object, uh, let me go back to object mode. Uh, let's see. So yeah. So let me let me show you real quick for that. Uh, so I'm gonna bring in another. Um, I'll but I'll bring in another another cube. So for that, I just hit Shift A on my keyboard to bring in another mesh. Or you can just go up to the top here and go to Add mesh and then just do whatever you need like a plane a cube a sphere uh so you wanted to know about the rotation so you can either click on this over here to rotate if you hover over you can kind of see that it gives you the shortcut for the keyboard so uh it's r so you can rotate also when you hit r you can lock it to the x y and z axis so if i want to just rotate on the x axis i'll click x on my keyboard so it'll rotate on the X, but if I wanna do Y, I'll hit Y on my keyboard and you can kind of see the line color changes. So now I rotate on the Y or I can do Z, rotate on the Z axis. So uh, yeah, so like when you're doing animations or anything, you can uh, play around with that. Uh, and uh, yeah, you can lock it like I just did right now. Um, yeah, and scaling is the same thing. So you just click, um, it's S for the shortcut. So S and then you just kind of, drag your mouse to make it smaller or bigger or with the keyboard you could type in a number and it'll make it bigger or smaller so uh, okay uh so yeah let me get started then um i'll probably answer a lot of your questions as we're doing the uh, kirby um, model so let me see so i'm going to bring in a sphere so uh, I did uh, shift A, now I'm going to bring in a UV sphere. Uh, so this is going to serve as the body for our curvy today. Um, so with, with this, it's pretty straightforward. It's just a little uh, puff ball um, made of several circles. So one thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to go over here. Uh, so this area over here is just all the properties for your object. So when you click on an object, you'll be able to see like what modifiers you have, uh, the material properties um, and all that stuff. So for now, I'm going to go to modifier. Um, oh, to delete something, just highlight it and then hit delete on your keyboard and make sure you're in object mode and then it'll get rid of whatever you have there. Um, let's see. So uh, I have it selected. So again, you know it's selected if it's highlighted in yellow. So I'm gonna go to modifier. And again, I'm going to the little wrench right here. Oh, I deselected. So I clicked on the wrench. That's where you add your modifiers. So um, modifiers just help you do a lot of stuff to the mesh. Uh, for this one, I'm going to do subdivision surface. So as you see, I clicked on it. It just added a bunch of more vertices and um, faces to the object. So um, when you're working with your models, if you wanna get more detail, you would want to add one of these subdivision modifiers and then you could play around with the number. Uh, so the more you do, the more detailed it is. But again, uh, the more, uh, um, if you don't have a good computer, it'll uh, start uh, slowing down your computer because it needs to use a lot of your uh, memory and stuff. So, um, but for now, I'll just leave it at this. Uh, that's fine for me. Um, let's see. Um, so now I'm going to, you can duplicate this. Um, let me see. So I just did a shift D. Um, that'll duplicate the object that you have there. 
uh, I'm just gonna move it over to the right. I'm gonna hit scale and then I'm gonna do 0.5 and then hit enter. So that gives me one of his arms. Uh, so yeah, there you go. So now I have the big sphere and the little sphere. Uh, and again, all I did was duplicate this one and then um, I scaled it, I hit S on my keyboard and then I just, I, I did 0.5, but if you wanna play around with your mouse, you can scroll um, up and down until you get the size that you want. Uh, so let's see. Uh, so now I have the right arm. I'm gonna add another modifier to mirror this pretty much on the other side. So uh, again, I'll go to the modifier, make sure this is selected and you know that it's selected when it's highlighted in yellow. Uh, then you go over here, uh, click on mirror modifier, uh, and then you just want to select the sphere for the mirrored object. So it's mirroring on this object. So now I have a circle on both sides. So uh, this, this mirroring technique is useful. I've done previous workshops where we do a giraffe. So when you're doing like, a, like if you're working on the head, this will save you time if like the left and the right look similar. Um, that way you don't have to like you create the ears, the mouth, the eyes on one side and then go to the other side and have to try to recreate it to match the right. If you use a mirror modifier, then anything you do on the right is gonna get mirrored to the left. So it just saves you a lot of time. And then later you can go and uh, move things around and modify them as you need to. Um, let's see. Oh, you guys don't know how to get the sphere. I just saw that. So do a uh, shift A and then go to mesh. And then it's a UV sphere. Yeah, that'll get you this. Um, yeah, uh, so let's see. So now I have these, right? Uh, so now I'm just gonna do another duplication for the legs. And then I'm just gonna drag them down. Mm -hmm. Oh, mirror, mirroring is just um, like you click on the object, uh, come over here to the wrench, and then you go to um, add modifiers and it's just uh, in the middle, mirror. Uh, then once you do that, uh, over here, you just need to uh, select, uh, click on this and select the sphere, the middle sphere. That way the, this object is mirroring um, on the other side of this object. So if not, you won't see anything. So. So I just clicked on this and then just select the sphere, which is this guy right here. Um, how do I change the size of the? Oh, okay. For that, it's just scale. So click on click on the object, hit S for scaling, and then you can scale with your mouse, however you want it, or you can just uh, with the keyboard type in a number and play around with that, and you can make it smaller or bigger. Uh, so it's just S on the keyboard for scaling. Um, yeah, so pretty much I have the curvy kind of set up. Um, let's see. So now one thing we want to do, we want to add another modifier. Uh, this modifier is for, um, cause you can see right now that the circle is kind of like they're intersecting, they're cutting into each other. So what I'm going to do now is use a Boolean modifier. What this is going to do, it's, it's going to use this, this um, sphere to cut into the model of this. So once I do that, it'll kind of cut this into a half circle. Uh, that way, when we do the animations, it kind of slides on his body and it's a little cleaner. Um, let's see. So for that, you just go again, click on the object, go to the wrench, uh, add modifier. Uh, you want to do Boolean, and then it should be at the bottom of all your modifiers. Uh, so you want to click on the object right here. Uh, so it's the sphere again. So you see, as soon as I did that, now it's it, it um, modified this uh, sphere. So now it's like a half half a sphere because it's using the as uh, this <clears throat> the center one as a reference to cut into these. And you want to do that again for the for the feet. So again, click on the feet, uh, click on the wrench, add modifier, Boolean. And then you want to go to the object section of that um, and then just do sphere. And then 
we have that uh, going. So, uh, so now we have the, the feet, we have the arms, we have uh, the body. Uh, so next thing we want to do is we can um, we can uh, separate these because right now if you see if I click on these they're joined so they're like the same ones. Uh, we we don't want to do that just because if we move and we start the animation and we move this arm up it's gonna mirror the uh, whatever we're doing here on this side so it would move both arms up essentially so we need to separate everything right now. Um, this one's by itself, but these are joined and these are joined. Um, so let's do one thing real quick before we separate them. So now going back to the modifiers, uh, you want to apply them because right now they're not applied. It's just uh, like a preview of what it does. So to add them, you just have to come over here and it, you see this down arrow. Uh, so we can start with the subdivision one, click down, and then you see this, it says apply. Uh, it's that or control A for the shortcut on the keyboard. Um, so if you do that, it'll apply that modifier. Then I wanna apply the mirror modifier and the Boolean. Uh, so right now, since they're both linked, it uh, applied it for both. Uh, now I'm gonna do the feet. So again, just click on that down arrow, uh, apply, apply for mirror and apply for Boolean. Uh, there you go. So we have that, uh, and it's your it's your Kirby. So you guys can play around before you apply the modifiers if you want to make his hands smaller or if you want to make any changes to his feet. Um, I know his feet is not like circular, circular. It's like kind of an oval shape. So if you want to do, um, if you want to play around before you apply the mirror, I already applied it to mine. So um, I'd have to do it to both uh, feet, whatever I do to one. Uh, but I'll go ahead and show you really quick how to how to do that. Uh, so I'm going to actually it's still there. oh yeah I haven't separated it yeah so I could still I could still do both. Uh, so let's see or we'll find out right now. So I'm just gonna zoom in at the bottom. Uh, up here in the middle, uh, there's this uh, area right here for uh, a few more options that you can do. So I'm gonna turn on proportional editing. Uh, so what that essentially does is if I, uh, like, let's say I, let me go into edit mode. Uh, so now you see all the, uh, I think I'm on face mode. So I want to go to to the vertice, vertice mode. So now you see all the vertices on my mesh. So if I don't have this on and I try to move something, so I can show you really quick. So I'm going to click on this middle one. So if I don't have proportional editing on and I grab this, I'm just moving essentially just this vertice. Uh, but I don't want that. I want to kind of have it, everything proportional. So as the name implies, um, this is going to kind of help me grab everything that's connected to it and move it at the same time to give it a better shape. Uh, so over here, you have different options too. So you have like, you could kind of see here, I'm just going to keep it as smooth. Um, but you guys can play around with this on your own if you want and see what effects it does to yours. Uh, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to hit G to grab. And then you see the circle. I'm just um, going to shrink that circle, that area circle with my uh, with the wheel on my mouse. So now you could kind of see it's moving that, but I can make it bigger to grab more of the object. You see, as I increase that area, it's moving more of that uh, other other vertices with the uh, one I selected. So, so maybe I'll, I'll flatten it out to that, um, and then I'll do the same to this one. Uh, so I'll just hit G and then kind of move it around. Yeah, and uh, sorry, I should have I should have done this before I I applied the mirror modifier because. Um, uh, that way, like if I would have just done it to this side, it would have done essentially the same thing to this side. But I mean, it's not uh, the end of the world. There was something very simple. Um, so yeah, you see, I just kind of flattened it out. And and then if I wanted to make it a little more, maybe I can select this one right here. I can hit G and then move it out a little bit. Maybe I'll shrink it. 
yeah so and uh, again it's your kirby so play around with that and um just get it to how you like it uh hit and grab yeah so essentially yeah i can go over and maybe flatten out the feet a little more uh but for now i'm happy with this i can always come back to this and play around with it later um Oh, to flatten the feet is just essentially what I did was I, I made sure I have the vertice on uh, select on and make sure you're in edit mode. I just grab that very center vertice right here and then make sure you have proportional editing on. Uh, once that's on, I just hit G on my keyboard and then uh, you can play around with this circle that kind of uh, increases the area of um, of um, what you're, it's going to affect when you move the vertices. So you see, I can I can flatten it out more if I want to. And then again, I could come over here again, click that center one, make sure proportional editing is on. Uh, then I can just hit G and then just kind of move. And because of proportional editing, it's moving all the vertices connected in that area. So it's, uh, um, it makes it look a lot cleaner and proportional editing is up here if you see where my mouse is so this is on right now and that is off so if it's blue you're good to go and on your own you can play around with all these different um modifiers for it but um but yeah yeah i think i'm good right now with his feet kind of like it uh so let's see uh so now i want to separate these right uh, so again, let me see. Uh, I'll do the feet first. So I'm going to click on the feet, make sure they're highlighted. I'm in object mode. Now go to edit mode. And then if you hit P, uh, that's the shortcut to se separate meshes from like a group. So right now, since they're uh, linked together, this is just pretty uh, essentially going to unlink them. So I hit P on my keyboard when I'm in edit mode and uh, just do my loose parts. So now if I go back to object mode, it's an, in, I, when I click on it, you don't see the, them both being highlighted. Um, since these are still kind of linked together, then you, you, you see the difference. Now, the feet aren't, I can select them. I can go into edit mode and modify this on its own. Uh, but this one, they're still linked. So if I go to edit mode, essentially I'm still modifying both. So, um, so I'm gonna separate the hands now. So in object mode, make sure you select the hands tab to go into edit mode, or just go up here, click on the down arrow, go to edit mode. Uh, once you're in edit mode, um, yeah, it's P on your keyboard and you wanna separate by loose parts. So now if you go back to object mode, um, yeah, you have different parts now for your curvy and over here on this area, it's kind of like Photoshop. So if you click on them here, you can kind of go through all the different parts. Uh, you can name them too. So like if you want to just, just name this as the body, uh, just to keep it clean and you know what, what it is. Yeah, you can go ahead and name them too. I'm just double clicking and just typing. Uh, let's see what highlights there. So right foot. Uh, you can name it whatever you want to, whatever helps you distinguish them. So I'm just left clicking on them. And I mean, that might be really helpful if you have a lot of stuff uh, like connected to your object and um, you just want to be organized. So like if you're just quickly looking for a part, you, you could just look for the name. If not, it's just going to be like sphere or cube and uh, the number. So you might be, it might get a little confusing later. So let's see. So yeah, now I have everything like, uh, yeah, everything's good to go. Uh, so we're almost we're almost there, guys. Uh, so hopefully you were able to follow along. Um, now uh, what we want to do is uh, you can right click on your uh, on the body of your curvy, and then you have a few options here. So you see shade smooth. Uh, I clicked on that. So now look at your curvy. It's like smooth. You don't see all the little bumps anymore. Uh, so you can go ahead and do that for each. Uh, so you have to make sure you click on 
and it's highlighted, right click and then shade smooth. Uh, and then I'll do it to this arm, right click, shade smooth, uh, do it to the feet. Yeah, so it just gives it a smoother feel to it, so. Uh, so you're asking, how do I separate mirrors? Um, so again, I, I already did it to mine, but you would essentially just click on the object, hit tab to go to your uh, edit mode, and then hit P. That should give you this window, and then do loose parts. So that'll separate your objects. Uh, okay, guys, so it's looking good. Uh, now, the next thing we wanna do is, uh, I shared a link with you guys in the beginning with some of like images uh, for the face uh, for Kirby. So uh, we can go ahead and um, we're gonna use that in a bit. So I'm gonna click on the body of my Kirby and I'm going to go to the top and I'm going to go to shading. Uh, so now here's where I'm going to essentially add the material for that or like the face. So, so you can kind of see I have my object there. Make sure that it's selected and you'll know again when you select something in Blender because it's highlighted yellow. Um, and you want to click on new. Um, so essentially what this uh, does is um, it lets you add like color to your objects or materials like texturing and all that. Uh, you could kind of see here, like you have a lot of different options here. Like if you clicked on this, you could turn them green. Uh, you could play around with the roughness. You see, you can make it rough, you can make it shiny. Um, so that's like the default uh, uh, modifiers here or uh, nodes as they're called in Blender. So this node, um, helps you modify a lot of the stuff on there, but I'm not gonna use this one. So I'm just gonna click on that node and delete it. Um, now I'm gonna go to add over here on the top and then I'm gonna do texture and I'm gonna do texture, uh, image texture. So again, you just go to add, go to texture and then image texture. So then you should get this box right here. And let me zoom in. So now I have this box right here. Um, you can connect this one to this one now because it's kind of replacing the uh, one we deleted. And now if I hit open, uh, I can find the images on my computer. So from that link I shared, uh, you can um, download those to your computer wherever you want and just make sure you remember where they're at. So that way um, you can uh, go to them and uh, access them right now, let me see. Yeah, so here's mine, Kirby faces. So I shared with you all these different faces. So you can select whatever face you want. Um, it's up to you. Um, let's see, so I'll, I'll just do, I guess I'll just do this one and this one. Uh, let's see if it'll offset one. Actually, I'll just do one at a time for now. Um, let me do this one. Uh, it's not letting me. Let me do it again. Uh, uh, let's see. No, I'm still keeping that one. No, that's fine, I guess. Uh, there you go. I'll just do single image for now. Um, so again, I just, uh, what I did was, um, I just went to single image instead of the sequencer for now. Um, we'll play around with multiple images next week for that, for the animation part. Um, I'll show you how you can like change the faces and stuff and keyframe and all that. Uh, for now, we're just going to keep it simple and we'll just keep it one uh, image, so single image. And um, once you have your image, he is actually looks good. If your face came out like to the left, sometimes that happens to me where his 
like eyes and mouth and cheeks are like uh, over here by the arm. All you have to do is click on him and hit R to rotate and then just rotate your ball, the sphere, and then align it with your arms. And then that'll fix that problem. So it's not a big problem. Uh, now let's do the arms. So for the arms, uh, again, I'll hit new, get this. So you can do this one if you want. Um, if you wanna use the default uh, node that you get, you can just click on the base color do this little syringe and then you can try to get a pink from his like body and then that'll fill in that uh, arm and then you have to do it to each limb so you would click on the other arm the right arm hit new go to base color left click and then again you would do the syringe i just use the pink on the cheek that's like the closest one um and you could play around with all the stuff down here too if you wanted to like, uh, make it shiny or uh, make them look more like metallic or or more solid. Um, let's see. So I'm going to do the feet now. Uh, that should be it. Oops, sorry. I didn't do that right. Oh, actually, I'm so sorry. The feet are, yes, red feet, right? Um, so I'll just do, uh, <laughs> I'll just do that. And then this one, yeah, I need something looked off. Uh, let's see. There you go. So there you go, you have your Kirby. Uh, yeah, and I'll rotate, I'll zoom so you can kind of see him. Uh, yeah, so what we did right now was we went into shading again and we just played around with the nodes. So so nodes and Blender, it could get really complicated with nodes. You could do a lot of stuff for that. Like you could do a lot of shading and different effects for your models. If you're gonna do animation or special effects with Blender. Um, I might do a workshop later on once I get a little more comfortable with uh, teaching that part of Blender. So maybe like next semester, I'm playing around with all that stuff now, so. Um, so keep an eye out for like those workshops too. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, let's go back to the layout. Some people are having trouble with coloring and get the, getting the image on. So. Oh, the body. Uh, let me go back. Uh, so what specifically, um, if you could type in what you're, you're not able to get the image on there. Is that what you, uh, I could show you real quick again. So let me click on the body. So essentially I clicked new, it's not here anymore, but uh, when you hit new, you get this and uh, and this node right here, this green one. I essentially just clicked on this one and hit delete on my keyboard to get rid of it. And then I went to add, then I went to texture and then image texture. And then that gives you this one. Uh, so here I just hit open. And then uh, on my computer, depending on where you saved your pictures, uh, just go there, select the face you want for Kirby. Um, once you select the face you want, um, yeah, once you do that, hit open image, and then it should appear there. Um, but first you need to connect them. So when this one's deleted, you connect them just by left clicking on color, and then you connect it to where it says uh, surface on this node, material output. So once these are connected like this, um, you should see the fix. When you click uh, new. Oh, it should be up here, like right here in this area. Like when you click, when you click on it, it won't show it online, unfortunately, because I, I already clicked new. And uh, if you don't have anything there, um, you should have it, but let's see. Oh, there it is. You got it? Okay, let me bring in a new object I'll show you. Um, oh, control. And uh, after that, someone else was having trouble um, coloring a, a part, like for the feet and the hands. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Oh, no, no, it's okay. Uh, yeah. I'll catch you guys up. That way we can finish off. The, the last part's pretty quick. 
Um, so let me, I brought this in just to show you. So I'm gonna go into shading. I'm gonna select the cube. So you see the screen right now? There's nothing here, right? Here is a new button that I was talking about. So it says add new material, right? Because we don't have anything here. Um, one thing that might be too is that you're zoomed out or in here. That's why you don't see anything. So with your wheel, uh, mouse wheel, you can try to zoom in and out, but that shouldn't be the problem if you just got in there. Um, but click on this new. Um, if you deleted everything, just do Control Z. That that'll bring back what you deleted. Uh, Control Z, like with Photoshop and other software, will kind of take you back a few steps. So if you deleted everything, don't don't worry. Just con do Control Z, and then that should uh, bring stuff back. Um, so yeah, I have the cube. So hit new, and yeah. So now you can kind of see here's the here's all the material stuff. So now I can click on the base color, and then I can select the color. That would turn the screen. And like I mentioned before, uh, I didn't use this one, so I'm going to click on this and delete. And then I just simply went to add, and then I did texture, and then uh, image texture, and then I connected this to the material output. Uh, then I went to open found the faces for my curvy. Uh, and then you just select one. And then, yeah, <laughs> you see his face is like at the bottom of the cube. But uh, yeah, that's how you would how you would add the material. OK. And then uh, you see how I deleted my cube right now? I, I could just hit Control Z and then, yeah, it would bring it back. Or I could hit Control Z again. And, you see, like, so if you messed up or you deleted something, don't worry, just hit control Z and it, it'll bring it back. Uh, okay, so let's finish this off and then I can answer more questions at the end if you would like. Um, so now I have my Kirby, right? So up here, you have different view options for your Kirby. So you see that all the material is gone. I don't see his face anymore. If you go to uh, the viewport shading list uh, up on the top right, you see that brings in all the uh, stuff we just did in the shading mode. Um, one thing I wanna do though is make him transparent. I think that might've done it. Uh, just because I'm gonna bring in armatures. So armatures are like the bones that you're gonna add to Kirby so that you can uh, move his arms, legs, feet and all that. With armatures, it does get a little more complicated. Um, like if you're doing like a human body, uh, there's more bones that you have to um, parent to the object. So I'm gonna show you um, Kirby, it's real basic, um, but it can get a little more complicated depending on the mesh you're working with. So um, to add an armature, it's very simple guys. It's just shift A and then you get this and then uh, do armature in the middle. And then I see the bone, it's not transparent. So there you go. So I clicked on this guy right here to, to see through my object. Uh, these two selected, so. Or you can play around with that, but I, I like working with these two. Uh, that way I can move the bones and stuff around. So I have the first bone, which I'm going to uh, rotate. Oops, let me do control Z. Uh, let me switch to the side view. I'm gonna click on click on that, rotate. So I have that bone right there. Um, so now I'm gonna click on the bone and then I'm gonna hit extrude. Uh, so E is for extrude. Uh, let's see. Oh, there you go. So you have to be in edit mode, sorry. Um, so I hit tab and went into edit mode. And then um, I'm gonna click on the on the bone. And then I'm gonna do E to extrude. Uh, oops, I think I need to, let's see. There you go. So I'm just gonna extrude over to, let me do control Z. 
make sure it grab it goes into the like the arm a little bit and then so i'm pretty much just doing like an x from that middle part so i'm going into the feet and the arms so that's his uh that's pretty much i have a bone for his body arms and legs so it's just like a little starfish um Okay, so now the last thing I need to do now that I have this is um, I need to parent the like the different parts to the specific bones. Uh, so let's see. Let me make sure I uh, yeah okay okay so I'm good to go. I'm gonna go back to object mode. Uh, so I'm gonna click on this object. Uh, let me see. I'll go to this view. So I'm going to click on the, I'm going to do the left arm first just to show you. And it's very repetitive. So select the arm. And then um, to select multiple objects in Blender, you have to hold shift. So I'm going to hold shift and then I'm going to click on the arm armature. There you go. Uh, make sure you don't double select objects though. Yeah, I just did it by accident. So there you go. So I have both of these selected the left arm and the armature. And I just held shift down while I left clicked on the on the arm and the armature. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna drink some water. Uh, so now I'm just gonna go into uh, pose mode. Uh, pose mode is another option you get when you add armature to a mesh. So I'm gonna go to pose mode and then I'm going to do control P. And then I'm going to set parent to bone. Oh, I'm sorry. You have to select the bone first. So I'm going to shift select the bone. So that way I have this selected and the bone selected. Then control P and then set parent to bone. Uh, so now if I grab this bone, uh, oh, they're not connected to this guy. Hmm, I might have to do that over. Sorry, guys. Let me see. Let me try one more and see. Yeah, for some reason, it's moving the entire bone. It shouldn't do that. Um, let me see. Let me click on this. So I clicked on this, shift, click on the armature. Sorry, it's like hard to click on that guy. There you go. Uh, so I'm gonna go to pose mode. Uh, shift select this bone. And then let's see, I'm gonna parent, so control P and then set parent to bone and click out. So now, hmm, yeah, it's like, yeah, I didn't do that last time. So that's um. I wonder why it's doing that. I, I could start over right now. It shouldn't do that because these essentially should be connected here to this one, unless I flipped it. I might have flipped it. Uh, let me. I might have done that. Maybe it should have been over here. Uh, let me try something real quick, guys. Uh, So I'm in object mode. I'm going to go to edit mode for this. Yeah, I might have flipped it. All right, I just started over actually. It's gonna get really messy, so let's see. All right, I'm gonna start over guys, sorry about that. Uh, I'm in object mode, so I'm going to do shift A. Uh, I'm going to do armature. So I have this guy. Now I'm going to, I think I might have had it, yeah, the wrong way. Um, rotate. Oh, yeah. Let me see. Let me switch my view. Yeah. Uh, what I did right now is I just went to my numpad. If you have a numpad, I hit three and that gives me the side view. 
uh, that way I can just rotate on that. Um, it doesn't move it like at an angle or anything. So uh, let's see. And then I'm going to go in. Oh, yeah, that's what I did. Okay. Oh, sorry. Let me move this guy. So I'm going to hit three again. Uh, I'm going to grab, move this. Uh, <laughs> uh, object. I'm going to start over. <laughs> sorry, guys. Uh, armature. So I'm going to rotate. Then edit mode. There you go. Hopefully this is what's going to fix that. Um, so I'm going to extrude. Yeah, OK, so I just extruded made the body. So now I'm going to go to link these guys. So uh, go back to object mode, click on this guy. Now I'm going to click on shift click on the armature. Uh, then I'm going to go into pose mode. And then I'm going to click on the on the bone that I want to set the parent to. Uh, so I have those two selected, control P, uh, set to bone. There you go. Oh, okay, that's what it was. So, yeah, so to move this, I'm just doing R and then I'm rotating the hand and it's just, as you could kind of see, it's rotating on the body. Um, so you can kind of see the orientation for mine, how it works. So, And I'm going to do it again right here so you guys could see how I did the parenting. So go to object mode. I'm going to do the right arm now. So click on the right arm, shift, uh, select, oh, I hit that. Shift, select the uh, armature. So once you have both of these selected, go to pose mode uh, and then you want to select this guy right here. So control P. Oh, is it? Oh, OK. So pose mode. Let me go back to object mode. Oh, no, no, it's OK. Yeah, so yeah, pose mode. There you go. Thanks, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry, he pointed out that I had both arms selected. So yeah, I would have like um, parented to this too. Um, but yeah, I have these two now uh, selected. So make sure you don't have other stuff selected too. Like I, I, I just did. It's easy to make that mistake sometimes with Blender. Um, but now I just do Control P, uh, parent to bone. And then you could test it. Yeah, so you see. So now I have the, the arms. So now I want to do essentially the same thing to the legs. And then we're pretty much done after that. So I'm going to select the right foot, shift select the armature, uh, go to pose mode, uh, select that leg bone, uh, shift select it so that you have both selected at the same time, uh, control P to parent and then to bone. And then you can click on this, hit rotate, and then you, you kind of see now I can move his leg. So now I just have one more leg to go and I'm done. So go back to object mode. I'm going to click on this, then shift, hold shift, and click on the armature. So now once you have both of these shifts selected, you go to pose mode. Uh, then holding shift again, you want to click on the uh, bone for the arm. So now you have the hand and the arm. Uh, highlighted and then control P on your keyboard and you want to set parent to bone. Uh, so now if I click on this, yeah, now it's good. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's your Kirby. So now if you go to pose mode, um, 
let's see. Yeah, so now you see the uh, skeleton. Now you can, in pose mode, you can, you can start doing all the animation stuff for him. And that, that'll be the next workshop. Ooh, I guess I didn't do that one. Uh, yeah, I didn't print this one, right? But yeah, that'll be the next workshop, guys. Um, we'll do the, uh, I'll show you how to do the animation and uh, how to set up the, the scene. So I'll set, I'll show you how to set up like the, the grass, the image in the back. And then uh, I'll show you how to do the keyframing so that you can uh, uh, start playing around with that and create like an animation of your own. So that'll be for the next workshop. Um, uh, yeah, the recordings, let me look up the link, sorry. Uh, so let me give you that link. You see, uh, Uh, here's a link to the uh, library YouTube channel. So uh, here is where you can uh, look for the link for this uh, if you want to do it. So usually it takes a few days just because we have to get the captioning and everything uh, and edit out some of the um, beginning and end parts of the video. Um, but um, let me see. Make sure I have everyone in meeting. Uh, okay, there's a link to the uh, YouTube channel. So I would look for it maybe uh, like Monday. Hopefully by Monday it should be up. I'll, I'll try to get this out to the person that uh, uh, posts all this uh, like today or tomorrow. So they'll, they'll be able to post it hopefully soon before the next workshop. But we'll try by Monday uh, in case you need to uh, look at this again. And I did do this video previously in the summer, so it should actually be there. Um, I don't see it right now, but there should be a video for what I did today already up on the website. Uh, so if you wanna look through the YouTube channel's um, postings, it, it was one of the summer ones. So uh, I did show how to create Kirby. Uh, I think I just didn't show how to do the armature, but um, I did that today. Uh, because we're going to do the animation stuff next week. But um, yeah, anyway, yeah. Do you have any more questions that I might have not answered? Um, oh, how to bind the limbs to the, uh, I could do that again. I didn't do the legs. So uh, if you're ready to follow for the limbs. Uh, so I'm going to make sure you're in object mode. Uh, let's see. So in object mode, you want to select the limb that you want to parent to. So you want to select the leg, right? Um, so then you hit shift on your keyboard while holding shift left click on the armature, which is the bones. And then you'll see that both the leg and the bones will be highlighted. So that's what you want. You want the limb highlighted and the structure of the bone. Um, so once both are highlighted, go to the top over here, go to pose mode and then hit shift again on your on the keyboard and then click on the bone that you want to uh, combine that, like the leg to. So you're gonna join these two together essentially. So then all you have to do is do control P and then it says set parent to bone. So now the bone will be what moves that uh, limb around. So when you hit R, you can, you can kind of see now. I can move the little foot. Uh, yeah, hopefully. Yeah, that, that answered your question. Let's see. Yeah, so now I have all my, yeah, he should be good to go. Oh, the next workshop is next Wednesday, same time. Um, and uh, to sign up, it's also the same. Uh, you, you go to um, wherever you signed up for this one and there should be a link on, I think it's Eventbrite for the library. Uh, you can access all that through our, um, I think our library website, uh, if you go to workshops and all that. So part two is the one you would want to sign up for. Um, yeah, and then from there, um, we'll continue working from what we did today. Um, so that'll be probably another hour, maybe 30 minute to an hour long workshop, um, just depending on my like, questions and like, you know, like today, like I had to redo some of the stuff because I, I made some mistakes, but 
um, yeah, it should be like a good, good uh, hour workshop, I guess, plan for that. Uh, yeah, uh, no more questions, guys. So, uh, yeah, we're good, right? No? Okay. Sure. All right, guys. Uh, let me share my contact info and then that's, uh, I'll let you guys go. So if you need to email me with questions about the services or about the workshop today, uh, this is my email. And you can also ask for me at the Creator Lab too. If you come into Orbach, turn to the right and the Creator Lab is there open 12 to four. And I'm usually in and out a lot, but um, if I head's there a lot and you can ask any of the studio workers there too. And they can call me if I'm free, I can come and answer questions in person as well. Um, and show you stuff there too on the computer if you need like a refresher on this or anything. So I'd be happy to. All right. All right, everyone. So thank you for joining us today and hopefully we'll see you at the next uh, workshop. Um, yeah, thank you everyone and uh, have a good rest of your day.